Imperial bikes, one of the original units in the game, but they have more recently, or well, not that recently, but recently enough to do a video on it, had a mastery line added to them. And since they're a unit that I've never really sort of got on all that well with, I thought we should take a look, try out the mastery line, and see if they are worth using now. So, in pikes, I say one of the traditional units in the game, and famous really for their advance. That's kind of what they're all about, always been about the advance. And they basically just lower their pikes, walk into the enemy, uh, very effective against cavalry, but also quite effective against infantry, causes knockdown, etc, etc. But recently they've had the addition of a mastery line. And, you know, there's all the usual little bits of uh, extra defence, extra damage, but there's two real big changes. They now get a loyal strike ability. So whenever you activate your advance, as that advance uh, continues, you basically build up damage. This damage then gets put into Loyal Strike. So you can press three, Loyal Strike will activate, it will stop the advance, and the unit basically goes for this sort of stab. It's almost like this little burst damage of stab and it puts it out. The only problem is when they're in the advance or after they've got the first three hits of advance, thanks to the awe-inspiring part of the mastery line, they get CC immunity, which does make it quite um, effective, which is quite a nice thing when you're doing advance. But on the downside, when you end it for the loyal strike, the CC immunity ends. So I do find that you don't always really manage to effectively deploy that loyal strike. It can be a little bit hit and miss. And I, and I also wish it automatically activated when the advance ends, rather than having to try and time it and stop your advance to activate your loyal strike. But it does make the unit quite effective, and with a lot of cavalry that's kind of in the game at the moment, then having some imp pikes is certainly sort of well, well worth having. I've not got anything particularly amazing on them doctrine-wise, just basic um, breakthrough doctrines, a bit of extra damage while bracing, slightly extra defensive stats, the bleed effect on horses and a siege fighter doctrine, just to try and boost them a little bit, but it doesn't make all that much difference. And then in terms of veterancy line, I'm currently down the top line, basically going for the increased damage over the increased defense. Obviously, with them being sort of shieldless, they do suffer quite a bit from javelins, of which there are quite a lot in the game at the moment, um, all sort of ranged units, things like that. Obviously, they're going to stop cavalry instantly, but they're also quite effective against infantry. Anyway, waffled on long enough, let's see what we can do in some battles with these guys. So, on to the final base point on Sun City. Just been fighting on the point a little bit with my hero, but trying to hold the unit back and trying to avoid those fire grenades, <laughs> which we mostly did, thrown from the rooftops at us. Um, but really trying to hold the unit back, because you get caught onto like a 40 second cooldown with advance. I don't want to use it too arbitrarily, you know, I want it to be. If they make a push on point, I want to be there to stop them. But anyway, standing there getting hit by the fire grenades didn't seem very appealing. So I actually come around the corner and we've got a few heroes and some friendly iron reapers here. So this is a really interesting prospect. Try to give pursuit, get a little bit aggressive. This uh, pole axe gets slightly too aggressive and gets himself killed. But we can come up, put our advance on and we can catch up and essentially block these full unit of men at arms. We can finish them off, activate our loyal strikes, which just finishes off the enemy hero. We then just brace into these couple of units of Onimusha, not really too much of a problem, and then they retreat. Nice. So we managed to wipe out a unit of men at arms and get ourselves a hero kill. So let's pull back, got our skills, got our advance on cooldown, and we can go from there. For some reason these Onimusha ended up pulling back through this entrance away, I'm not quite sure why. So we just come round, managed to catch up with them, and just clip the back of the unit and get a couple of extra kills. That was just uh, not quite sure why they did that. Maybe that was. I don't know. <laughs> no logical reason that I can come up with them for them to come back around that way. Anyway, so we take that one, come back round up onto base point and try to have a look where we want to go from here. I noticed there's a few of our friendly teams sort of around this corner, but 
realistically, that is a one-way fight. It's only going to result in my death. So I didn't really want to do that. And we, we kind of get a little bit caught by this Paladin charge. Didn't feel I had a lot of choice but to take this fight because I would have got hit in the side by them anyway. This unit is quite slow to get out of fights. So we go for our advance. Then we activate our um, Loyal Strikes, get our Hero Kill, try and finish off the couple of enemy Paladins and get ourselves out there. Just it takes us up on a good few kills. Come around the corner, we do have an enemy Maul here, but he soon gets himself killed, so it's not a massive problem. And we can get the unit back over to the supply point. So we've lost about half the unit at the moment, but we've pretty convincingly killed a full stack of Men-at-Arms and at least a good chunk of a unit of Paladins as well. But as the unit's obviously back up healing on the supply point, we can still play around with a little bit of our hero. We've got some friendly Men-at-Arms pushing in from behind. Just got to be a little bit careful of things like that, Owen and Musha, if I get hit by the hero charge on that, then that will be a pretty instant death. Anyway, so call the Imperial bikes back, or what's left of them, as the enemy is starting to push up onto the base point again. This enemy more manages to unfortunately take down our grape shot. We don't get quite the kill, but we do get a bit of damage on him. And we get pushed through, we've got this enemy, um, oh, slight bit of lag. And obviously I don't want to activate my advance while our friendly imp bikes are advancing. I want to use both. See, we're going to get pushed around this corner, so try and push the engagement to them. Accidentally hit my map key, but this second unit of Onomusha does the right thing. It gets the flank on me, and that's what finishes off the unit. You can see how if they'd have both stayed centrally, I'd have managed to knock them both down with my advance, but because they separated, I couldn't quite get them. But still, nice game, picked up quite a few kills. Shows how the Impikes can be used and how they can do quite a lot of damage to infantry. It's not just an anti-cavalry unit. Next up, Dassault Fort. I nearly went for the advance on those cavalry, but just managed to hold back. Glad I did, because you really want to make sure you're not doing double advances. Try and time them separately. And then, as the infantry fight comes in, we can go in, go on with our glaive buff, and get stuck in. And this is where that um, that three ability at the end of your advance is really nice. Because you get to the end, go for that stab, get the hero kills, and push through the rest of that unit. And we actually really managed to bring the cooldown on our advance down quite a lot. So, with that going on, start to push over, get really annoyingly caught by this maul. <laughs> couldn't stop him, I kept getting interrupted, couldn't get any of my abilities off on him. Although, we did manage to just get the kill as a bit of compensation. Get on to the point, but as the enemy is starting to push out to counterattack, push the unit over, advances off cooldown, go for the second advance on the corner, and we catch everything that's trying to come out of their spawn point. And then, of course, at the end, as the advance is about to end, Going on with the three ability, and bang, there we go, we get another hero kill, and pick up quite a few kills. Unfortunately, then we get the cavalry charge, which about does for us. But it shows how you can get a good couple of advances out of your impikes, and even with half the unit dead, you can actually still do quite a lot of damage. Finally, we're going to end this video up on Linwu, one of the worst games we've had. Lost a point in about two minutes flat. And just as we're trying to get ready for the base defence, the enemy is pushing down the back. Now again, we've got friendly impikes going in first, so I'm just holding off on my advance, waiting till theirs comes to the end, as theirs is ending, following immediately up with mine, going on with the glaive damage buff, just pushing into so much stuff down there. And then as it gets to the end, going with that loyal strikes and getting a few extra kills. And then just basically bracing into it. Get one or two treb sneaks over the top of that gateway but we can basically hold them off there. But we are now being pushed on the base point, so even though we survived that one, we are not out of the woods yet. Don't really get time to go back to heal up, so bring the unit back round, but I have still got 20 seconds on my advance. These units can fight a little bit without any abilities, but realistically, their melee, you know, outside of their advance is pretty crap. They just don't really perform very well. They largely just die and pick up like a couple of extra kills. So if possible, Really, I try and keep this unit out of the fight until the advance is off cooldown. We get a few little bits here, like some imp shields, just some stragglers, which I'm happy to brace into. But I'm waiting for that cooldown ends. And then when it ends, we go on another advance into everything that's trying to come up the top of this staircase. Pick up quite a lot of kills here. And then go for the knockdown with my Flying Reaper. Then we go on with the Loyal Strikes. Pick up an extra hero kill. But unfortunately, there's just a little bit too much stuff there. Uh, we eventually just get driven back. And ultimately, we do end up losing this match. But anyway, that's how kind of my experience of Impike has gone. I've not really shown many clips, particularly of them walking into cavalry. Everyone knows they can do that. They walk into cavalry absolutely fine. It'll stop cavalry dead in its tracks. It works fantastically. It always has, and it probably always will. So I didn't think there was a lot of point in showing that. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And of course, I shall see you guys all 
on the next one.